Okay, so we'll now go ahead and install Velociraptor on our lab environment. So Velociraptor is a server client application, so we need to install clients on our Windows clients, and then we'll install the server, which is going to be installed on our host system. To do so, we'll just go ahead on to the Velociraptor GitHub repository. From there, we can download the latest release. And if we scroll down to the latest releases, we need to search for, in this case, our Windows systems. So there's going to be Windows EXE and Windows MSI. Let's download both and that we'll see will make things much easier. So I'll just save it on my desktop, the EXE and then also the MSI. Everyone is encouraged to also download the signature file to check the integrity of the code. Now, once we have it downloaded, we'll use the EXE to first create a configuration file for our setup. Then we'll install the server on our host system, and then we'll go ahead and install the Velociraptor application on our clients. First things first, let's go ahead and create the configuration file and install the server. So to do so, we need to open up a CMD terminal and then we'll just work with the exe file. So in this case, let's generate the configuration. And this is just a quick wizard to walk us through some of the settings that we need. So Velociraptor exe and then the command is config generate dash i. So this is how we are going to generate the configuration file. So where are we going to deploy the server on? In our case, directly on this Windows host. Data store directory, this is important. It's just gonna store data in the temp folder. So this is not a long-term solution, but good enough for labs. Then it is going to use self insert. That is good enough for us as well. We do not have a DNS name, it's just localhost. And then the port to listen on. This is really important. It is going to listen for the clients to report in on port 8000. I already have Splunk running on 8000, so I recommend that we are going to pick something different. So this one, for example, 999 is the port that the front end is listening on. And then we'll have another port, 8889, recommended to us. This is where you can you, where you can actually uh, access the application, the front end, through your browser. And 8889 should be good for us. 9999, remember that's the port that the clients are going to be listening in. So two ports that this server is going to listen on. The DNS we do not need. And this is the username that we need to log into the system. So we can just say admin and password, and then just hit enter so that this is going to go away. And so it is generating the keys and setting up Velociraptor, logs directory, temp folder. Again, in this case, it's fine. Now, do we want to restrict VQL on the server? Just going to say no, because it's again, it's a lab environment. Where do we write the server config file? We can write it right here. This is now also is generating a client config file with the settings above, let's say OK. And here you see we've create, created two new files, YAML files, which is the configuration files for Velociraptor. So in this case now, we can go ahead and install the, the Velociraptor server. So that's as easy as just using the same binary, the exe file. And now we're going to install it on this system. So if you want to install it somewhere else, course you need to copy the files over here over there but in this case here we are going to install it here on our system and we're just going to say velociraptor and then server service and then install there's a bunch of parameters for this binary that you can use it for but for a windows installation we just need to install install it this way and point it to this server config yaml so this is the configuration file that we just created 
and just hit enter and this should automatically install and spin up the Velociraptor server. To make sure that it's running, we can go to the task manager and check for the services. And sure enough, we have a Velociraptor. The service is up and running, so let's see if we can access it through our browser. So the port was 8889, localhost 8889. And we, of course, need to do HTTPS because we created a certificate, a self-signed certificate, as you can see here. So we go advanced and accept the risk and then we get prompted to the username this means we are connected to our application which was admin password username we just created save it and here's our velociraptor welcome screen okay so this means our server installation worked now the next thing is Windows automatically does not allow us to send data from the clients to this system because the system now is listening on port 8889 to, for the, to serve the web application, but also on port 9999 for clients to report in. And this is an unusual port. Windows firewalls would not allow us to do so. So we need to now go ahead and open up this port and in, make an inbound rule to allow the port. So we can just go to a firewall, the advanced settings. So open up firewall settings. There is advanced over here. And now let's go ahead and create an inbound rule for our Velociraptor service. So you just click new rule. Then we say, we cannot just say allow this port, but I'll just go ahead and say allow everything inbound for Velociraptor because wherever Velociraptor is listening on, I don't want to have it cut off. Um, again, for a lab environment, it's totally fine. We now just need to point it to our Velociraptor server or the service, which is installed under program files, Velociraptor exe. So this is the application that we need to allow to listen on various ports technically just the port 9999. So when you have that, just say, okay, what should be done? So we want to allow connections to this application. And where does it apply? Technically, we can just say private, but we don't have a public network here. So again, labs for labs, that's okay. Just call it a name like Velociraptor inbound. And there's our firewall rule. So now we should be good to receive data on this port and then show up, have it show up on the Velociraptor platform. That's it for the server installation. What we need to do now is installing the clients. And this is what we have the MSI for because that's a little bit more straightforward. Now, first things first, we need to get the clients, the MSI, onto the client machines that we want to install it on. So this depends on your lab setup. Just going to go ahead and install it on my Windows server first. So I'm just going to grab it directly from my host system. And what we need is, in this case, MSI, but also, of course, the client config YAML. So this is the file that shows us, that actually tells this service uh, how to connect to our, to our server. And this might actually be worth it just checking out real quick can open it up with a text editor. And so this is a client config and we need to, before we copy it over, very important, double check where this client is connecting to. 
And we can now see this client is going to connect to our 9999 port, but on the local host. And obviously we do not want to listen on the client's local host itself. We need to send connect to the server's IP address. So that's why we need to real quick figure out the IP address of our server. In this case, I have my virtual lab connected to my lab services, ethernet adapter, virtual ethernet adapter, which is has assigned the IP address 192.168.01. This is the IP address that my clients need to connect to in order to send the data to the Velociraptor service. So that's what we need to change in our settings. Make sure that you get the IP address of your host system in here. Everything else, we need to see if there's any other potential IP addresses to change. I believe not. This is all standard configuration. There's the certificate, the self-signed certificate. So we can just do save. And now we are ready to copy the file onto our clients, including the installer. So just to copy, paste, and in order to run this, which is because it's an MSI, it's pretty straightforward. You can just open up a terminal here as well. And from there, we can use MSI exec, which is a command to install MSI applications. So it's called MSI exec, and then slash I for install, and then point it to the Velociraptor binary. And then we just gonna install Velociraptor, and then we are going to place the configuration file into the Velociraptor folder. So this is going to install the Velociraptor applica uh, client application. This should be it. So this application should not be running in the background as a service, but we need to make sure that it's going to use the right configuration file. So now let's go into the folder, the applications folder. That's under C, program files, Again, Velociraptor. And there's already a client config in here. So we need to replace that one. I'm just, just gonna say replace. And now we see this here pop up, which technically means it's something that indicates that it should actually have picked up our config and now uh, we're getting some output from the application. So that's a good sign can now go back and see if we are seeing something connected to our system. So if you click search on the magnifying glass on our host, there we have a system show up. This is the first system status is green. This is the client ID. If you click on it, this is what has connected to us. This is my client IP. We do not have, we haven't gathered any metadata or information about the tool yet, about the system yet. So that's why there's not much there. But anyways, it means that our installation on the client has worked. What we need to do now, if we have a second system, go over the same steps again, just install the client on all your guest systems. The same way we just did in on our Windows server. And then we should be done. So we again going to grab the config and the MSI from our host system. Client config and then the MSI. As you can see this one. Copy it over. Open up a terminal. Say MSI exec dash i and then point it to Velociraptor, install Velociraptor. And then from there, just place the config file into the Velociraptor installation directory. Program 
Velociraptor paste, replace, yes. And here we have this log output again, good sign. That's it. So our two clients should now be checking into our Velociraptor server on the host system. Opening up our browser again. And refresh the page. There you go. So this is our, was our previous client. Oh, this is actually the client that we just checked in. And this is the previous one. So 192, 186, 010 is my server IP address. 192.168.0.104 is my client address. So what you can do is interrogate. This is going to show us details, query the details about this domain controller here. You can now see we have information about it. And this is how we get gonna get started with Velociraptor. In a few steps, you can set up a simple Velociraptor client server application. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward to install everything on the clients, uh, no matter how many you have.